All right, Boston, we are back. Man, it's time to head into the year one offseason with your Boston Bruins after missing the playoffs in year number one. So there will be no trip back to the Stanley Cup Finals to try to win another Stanley Cup here in Boston. I'm sorry, Bruin fans, but uh, the simulation just wasn't with us this year. And I mean, look at this playoff picture right here. Minnesota versus Chicago, Calgary versus Colorado, LA versus Edmonton, and Dallas versus Anaheim in there. No defending Stanley Cup champion St. Louis Blues. No Nashville Predators in there. I mean, my goodness gracious. And in the Eastern Conference, five Atlantic Division teams. Tampa, uh, Tampa versus Florida, Toronto versus Montreal, and Detroit in there against uh, Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, we were the sixth best team in the Atlantic Division. And it seemed like everywhere else had the points. Like, all the points were in the Atlantic this year. Uh, we finished better than two other teams that made the playoffs in the Western Con Actually, I think one team was in the East. Hang on a second here. So Atlantic Division, entire league. So the Colorado Avalanche, your President's Trophy winning team with 111 points. Chicago in second with 110. Tampa, Minnesota, 107. Yeah, right. Uh, Pittsburgh, Toronto, Anaheim, Montreal, Detroit, Washington, Florida, LA, Dallas, Edmonton. And there you go, the Boston Bruins with 92 points. Uh, tied with the uh, same amount of points as the Calgary Flames. St. Louis didn't make the playoffs. And the New York Rangers, that was the one right there. 90 points, and they make the playoffs. My God, we finished with two points more than them. Who else didn't make the playoffs here? Philadelphia, Buffalo, Winnipeg, San Jose. I mean, St. Louis, Winnipeg, San Jose. Uh, who else was it? Vegas, Nashville. A lot of teams in the uh, the Western Conference, man. Uh, the New York Islanders from last season as well. So we have got to figure out how to conquer this year's simulation. And I think the first thing that we need to do before we even go into the offseason is point our finger at uh, who I can find responsible. And that is going to be our coaching staff. You sons of bitches. You had one freaking job to get our team back into the playoffs and you couldn't even do that. All right. So NHL head coach. Where is he? Oh, no, 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 no. This is the higher coaches. Hang on a second. Let me back out. I'll be getting you guys in the offseason. Don't you worry about that. Coaching staff, everyone who's in the NHL, you've got to go. Gaspar Potvin, absolute garbage here as a coach of the Boston Bruins. A- minus for offense, A for defense. I mean, that stuff looks good, but uh, we did not simulate too well this season. i got to find somebody that doesn't roll four, uh, roll four lines. I want to find somebody that uh, really gives all the ice time to our superstar players. Maybe that will uh, help us out. So, Gaspar, Potvin, all right, you were useless for us. Good luck somewhere else. Firing the coach. Bang! There he is. First uh, coach fired. NHL associate coach. There you go. Fired. Uh, Deschamps, NHL assistant coach. Fired. NHL goalie coach. Fired. Tukarash could have been a lot better this year. And the AHL coaches, I will leave. All right? So, step one, the coaches in Boston are Gonzo Alonzo. You currently do not have the current amount of coaching slots filled on your team. Please fill the following coaching slots. Uh, so, I have to get the coaches right now. Uh, promote, uh, hang on a second. How do I, how do I, how do I, how do I, I just want to back out and, okay, so, oh, okay, okay. So let me just fill up these slots then right now until I can sign some other guys. So I'll promote you to the NHL head coach and I'll pro promote you to the NHL associate coach. Is that it? Uh, AHL head coach, oh, shit. Uh, you, AHL head coach. There you go. Are we good? So you don't even need to have a goalie coach or anything like that. You just need to have the head coach. All right, so we've taken care of that. I think um, as we get to the offseason, there'll be more opportunities to find some coaches. So I'm going to wait to the NHL draft before we try to find anybody else. And speaking of the draft, at least we held on to our first overall pick. So the draft lottery, ladies and gentlemen, the draft lottery. Perhaps the Boston Bruins could get luck uh, lucky, <laughs> move up the draft lottery and get their hands on Alexis Lafreniere. That would be real nice. So I've taken care of that. I've taken care of that. Yeah, we can simulate to the draft. And I want to make sure that uh, the draft lottery is at least a little bit uh, entertaining for you guys. Unlike in other games where it would actually reveal the picks one by one, we still just have the basic screen where it lists everything immediately. I want to, I want to reveal them one by one to you guys. So the AHL season has been completed. Let's simulate through the playoffs and see who's going to take the Stanley Cup in year number one. 
Now, I don't know if the simulation is uh, inaccurate or not. Every year, a new NHL team ends up um, turning from a non-playoff team to a playoff team and vice versa. You know, the St. Louis Blues not making the playoffs after the winning a Stanley Cup. That's rough. Nashville not in there. That's rough. Winnipeg not in there. Uh, but if you look at a team like the Edmonton Oilers, you know, everyone was thinking they're going to be shit. And uh, the real deal, James Neal, they're off to a great start this season. So let's not go crazy. And the Stanley Cup champions are your Tampa Bay Lightning. So a realistic team did win the Cup. The Tampa Bay Lightning. They finally get it done after years of failure with that sweet roster. They no longer have to... Uh, they no longer have any pressure on them. They got the job done. If they need to make some trades to give them some flexibility on the salary cap end of their roster, they can certainly do it now. The Tampa Bay Lightning are Stanley Cup champions in year number one. And the Calder Cup champions, the Toronto Marlies. All right, so I'm putting this over the screen right now. New salary cap. I don't know when it's popping up. It should be popping up soon. I'll give you guys a, a list over it as well. But is this the draft? Yeah, I think this is the draft lottery. All right, so... I'm going to reveal it from the bottom up. Uh, the Boston Bruins, what do we just miss the playoffs by one game? Yeah, I think so. We would have the worst pick or the second worst pick unless we move up. All right, so come on, baby. Come on, baby. Don't say Boston. Don't say Boston. Don't say Boston. Fucking hell, Boston. 15 to 15. Well, there's no point in doing the draft lottery now, ladies and gentlemen. The Boston Bruins are not going to get Alexis Lafreniere. So let's just reveal the rest of it. And the Nashville Pred... What the fuck? Vancouver, what have you done? What have you done? The Vancouver Canucks, they had the second overall pick. But they ended up trading it to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And Tampa Bay, after winning a Stanley Cup, they get the second overall pick. Philadelphia again wins another draft lottery. They go from 12 to 13. Islanders move back from 2 to 4. Columbus 3 to 5. Vegas 5 to 6. Ottawa, New Jersey, Carolina. Ottawa again. And that's that, actually the San Jose pick turned out to be a good one for them. The top 10 pick, Carolina, Buffalo, Arizona, St. Louis, and Boston. So we did not move up at all. Nashville moves up uh, three positions. And the Tampa Bay Lightning, when did they acquire the Vancouver Canuck pick? Was that, is that a legitimate pick that they had or was that in the game? That might have been in the game over the course of the season that they traded. All right, hang on a second. I got to try to figure out how that trade happened. If I can stop it and go back to transactions and figure out... Uh, I don't think it'll go back that far, but I got to see. So if you retired players, let's just see what's going on here. Who is retiring? So Henrik Zetterberg is gone. No, Chara. All right. So good news, bad news. Bad news. We weren't able to get the big man, Zdeno Chara, another Stanley Cup, our captain. Uh, he was a plus 13 for us this year with 19 assists at 85 overall. I mean, I don't care if he's 43 years of age. At 85 overall, I want him to come back, um, but he's not. So it sucks, but it does free up some cap space for us. A guy like Tory Krug shouldn't be an issue to sign now. Uh, Louis Erickson's gone. Andrew Ladd. How many years left did Andrew Ladd had on his deal? Four years left at 5.5. <laughs> that's going to suck. When, uh, that still counts against the Islanders' uh, cap, right, in real life. I don't know about this game, but in real life, yeah. Derek Roy, Johan Franzen, all, right, all these other guys down here. Uh, what about goaltenders? A goalie's retiring. Michael Layton. Uh, Hanu Toivonen and Thomas uh, Popperle. All right, very good. So there are the retired players. Here we go, coach retirements. The following coaches have retired from the league. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I wonder if uh, Gaspard Potvin decided to retire after we fired him. <laughs> retired players that are now a scout. Roman Polak, get the hell out of here. We wouldn't trust you as a scout. Trevor Daly, Andy Green, Chris Mueller. All right, and draft interviews. All righty, so here's where it can get fun. We have our draft interview. We know we're drafting 14th overall, and uh, we, we, we know that we turned off scouts at the beginning of the year, but with the draft interviews, you can actually try to target a few players, and by interviewing the guy, you can figure out his potential and his player type. So uh, we're going to have fun with this now. Draft interviews. Today is the, uh, today is the day to conduct uh, pre-draft interviews with prospects. To uncover more scouting information, what would you like to do? Uh, go to view draft class. All right. 
So, do I have to just click on the name and interview player? Yes, I do. So, Alexis Lafreniere more than likely is going to go number one. Uh, Cristiano Beta, a defenseman, right-handed, more than likely going number two. Raymond, Holtz, Byfield, Perfetti, Lundell, all these guys. So, I really don't see us getting any of these guys, but, you know, around 14, that's where we're going. Yeah, and even our scouts right now are saying... This guy, Justin Barron, Jean-Luc Foudy, Jamie Drysdale, Antti Pitkinen. These seem to be our range right now. So what I want to do is I want to go into these players and see what kind of stats they've put up in their respective league. So this guy, Connor Azeri, looks to be more of a playmaker, a lot more of assists than goals. 72 games played, uh, like 46 points. Not a lot of penalty minutes, but in a C minus league, all right? So 46 points for Connor Zeri, more than likely a playmaker. Uh, Justin Barron, a right handed defenseman. Uh, yeah, Barron looks, I mean, he's getting the same kind of points as Zeri was in a little bit more time on ice, though. Three more minutes, almost four more minutes more time on ice. Uh, penalty minutes 42 compared to 52, so he's taking less, plus seven. Compared to a plus 23, all right, so it really just depends on whether or not you want a forward or a defenseman. Jean-Luc Foudy, woo, Foudy looking real good. 66 games played, 33 goals, 43, yeah, 44 assists, so you're looking at a guy who he might be a playmaker, but a playmaker who can score, I'd say he's more likely a sniper. Uh, with 33 goals, possibly a two-way forward as well. Uh, power forward, if he was bigger, he's only 5'11", 176, so I'm going to guess that this guy is a sniper. Uh, plus 18, looking good. So that's my bet right now. Uh, Drysdale, uh, offensive defenseman, for sure. Look at all those goals and assists. 44 assists in 68 games played, a minus 3, 52 penalty minutes in uh, 23.54 uh, 23 game. So out of those guys, I like that Foudy guy. But what about a fantastic Finn who's playing in an A-plus league? So his stats are way down. But he's played less games than these guys, almost 20 less games, and he's in an A-plus league. This anti-Pitkinen guy. Shoots left, he's a right winger, 6 goals, 9 assists, 38 penalty minutes, a plus 8. I don't know what kind of player type that would be. That might be like a two-way forward. Uh, sort of. Uh, Alright, so I think I want to uh, take a look at this Pitkinen guy, because the A-plus uh, sort of, no, he was the same as that uh, Zary guy. I like Pitkinen and Foudy. Uh, is there anyone else? And then Drysdale, I think. Rochette's not bad. Theo Rochette. Yeah, but we're way past our draft class right now. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Foudy, Drysdale, and Pitkinen. I think for my three interviews. All right. So first up, let's go. This guy, Jean-Luc Foudy, who had all those goals: 33 goals, 44 assists, and 66 games played. All right. Let's see what kind of player this guy is. What would you like to do? I would like to interview the player. EA. Thanks so much for meeting me for an interview. I'm excited at the potential of being drafted by your team. All right. So he's excited. That's good. Uh, skills, play, play style, personality, and interview. Uh, let's talk about your skills. Let's chat about your strengths and weaknesses. Let's see what this kid's all about. I'm more than happy to discuss my strengths and weaknesses. All right, so tell me, what do you consider your greatest strength? What does this guy have to say? Uh, it's got to be my skating. I think I am faster than most. Can accelerate quickly and turn on a dime. Well, in the new NHL, you're going to need somebody who can skate, so that's good. Uh, weaknesses. No, I'll go a new topic right now. I don't want to know a weakness right now. We can work on the weaknesses. So that's skills. What's your play style? So we can get the player type. Uh, works for me. I would like to chat about my playing style. Readiness. Play style. Uh, is he ready for the NHL? I don't need to know that. I want to know, because we have Fog of War off. Can you give me a quick breakdown on how you play on the ice? Yeah, I want to know his player type. Let's see. Uh, I think I excel in making passes and using my vision to make plays. I like to dish the puck. So actually more of a playmaker, even with those 33 goals. It looks like he's more of a playmaker here, boys. Uh, new topic. Let's go personality, sure. Let's see if he's somebody that we can rely on to stay loyal in the, uh, in the city of Boston. Uh, personality. How would you describe your personality? <laughs> this is so goofy. I am a consummate professional and get along with everyone. Ooh, all right. So this guy would definitely work out on our team. I didn't find anything that I didn't like. Uh, thank you for the interview. I'm hope I'm hoping to put on a jersey. I'm hoping to put on your jersey come draft day. So he wants to be a member of the Boston Bruins. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Boom. There it is. So there is the new... 
um, coaching interview, uh, uh, what's it called, game mode in NHL 20. Uh, playmaking style is a playmaker, his uh, personality type is professional, and his strengths is skating. All right. So will that reveal any information for us? There you go. Playmaker. Yeah, we got him at a playmaker. Uh, didn't figure out his potential, though. So maybe I'll figure that out for uh, one of these other guys. Let's try this Pitkinen guy and see what his potential is like. All right, so Auntie Pitkinen, the one player that we're going to interview coming from the Finnish League, an A-plus league. Thank you so much for taking blah, blah, blah. Let's get, uh, let's get NHL readiness. I think that was probably the potential, right? So if I go to play style... Was it playstyle or skills? Playstyle, yeah, readiness. All right, so are you ready to play in the NHL? To be honest, I feel I need at least a few seasons before I really hit my stride and will be competitive in the NHL. I'm dedicated to that goal. So he is dedicated to playing in the AHL, and considering he's coming from Finland, he'll have to play in the NHL or AHL. He won't be able to go back to the SHL. So, okay, uh, what about your play style? Two-way forward? I'm going to guess. I'm a strong forward who likes to drive the net while wearing down the other team's defenseman. Maybe more of a power forward right here. All right. Interesting. I don't need to know about your personality. I'd like to know about your skills. Uh, strengths. His weaknesses. Yeah, let's see. Let's figure out what this guy's strengths is. His body has to be my shot. I feel like I can nail a shot better than most, and I can put it in the net from my own end if I wanted to. So definitely... Definitely like a, a, a power forward, a strong guy, it seems like. Thank you so much. So let's see. I didn't figure out if this guy was loyal or not, but we did figure out his player type and his potential, hopefully. So he's a power forward. He loves to shoot. And his NHL ETA, three years. All right. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't say that Foudy guy is too much better. There you go. Medium top nine. So we really didn't uncover it too much right there. It's only two bars. All right, so I don't know what to make of that Pitkinen guy. Power forward. And uh, if we want to choose that defenseman, our last interview, let's go after Jamie Drysdale. I really liked his uh, 44 assists. I'm thinking that he's an offensive defenseman. Interview player. So let's do the same thing. Uh, I want to know uh, readiness. I think the readiness one was a, a pretty good one to try out for these guys. We don't need to read the same sentences over and over again. Uh, I feel I need a few seasons before I really hit my stride. So the same thing as uh, the, the Finnish player. Uh, play style. I want to know what kind of style he is. I consider myself an offensive inclined defenseman. I knew it. See, he's jumping up in the play. I like to jump into the rush and contribute offensively. And, uh, what about new topic? What about your strengths? Is it passing or is it, uh, skating? It's got to be one of those two. Uh, has to be my, sh oh, it's shooting. Has to be my shot. I feel like I can nail a shot better than most and put it in my, okay, so same answer. All right, so an offensive defenseman who can shoot the puck as well. End interview, and there it is. All right, so uh, playing style, offensive defenseman, strength shooting, and NHL ETA three years for Jamie Drysdale. So if we back out, there you go. So we got the uh, the ranks around 13, 14, and 15. We have the 14th overall pick. So if uh, one of these guys drop, then uh, we can definitely pick them up. If they all get selected, then it looks like we're going to have to go with Pitkinen because um, he's at 15. We should have the 14. The way the, uh, the computers draft in this game, they usually just take whoever's next available. So out of those three guys, if I had to make my choice right now here in Boston, uh, an offensive defenseman for the future wouldn't be a bad bet. Um, another center, playmaking center, I wouldn't be horrible for the third line to be behind Bergeron and Krejci. He's getting a lot of goals, though. I think it's got to be Foudy or Drysdale. This Pitkinen guy, power forward. I mean, he's going to be playing that Boston Bruins-style hockey. 13 minutes. I mean, 13 minutes is not a lot. He could be up to, like, 20-something goals. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to make of these three. I don't know. All right, so let's back out. Let's get back to it. I will say, I, I think I would do it a little bit differently, EA, but the idea that I have to interview players and we don't know um, what they're going to be, I do like that about the draft. I didn't like the fog of war, but this new feature, even though it could be done better, um, I like how you have to select a few players around where you think you're going to draft and do your final scouting there and then take a chance on a few guys rather than the draft being a for sure thing. So uh, you're on the right track when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, go to draft interviews. I think I already got the draft interviews done, right? Go to draft interviews. Did I already get the draft interviews done? Uh, what would you like to do? Pin to watch. Yeah, I already got this done, so back out. Oh, is it just the day? 
So I have to advance to the next day kind of thing. All right, so advanced day, there it is at the top. Advanced day to pro scout on the line. I highly recommend you update. Yeah, I have to update my scouting block because I want to try to get what's his face off this team. So before we get to the, uh, the draft, let me just take care of this right now. We're going to be stopping the video at free agency just uh, because there's going to be a lot of players, a lot of new directions that we can take this team on, and I want you guys to be able to chime in on that. But uh, when it comes uh, to the draft and the resign stage, I know exactly what I want to do. So, uh, add item. We have to get the bad contracts off of our team right now, right? So, sorting by salary. Krejci's coming back. Bergeron, Pasternak, Marchand, uh, David Backus. We, he's got one more year left. If we can't trade him, then we're going to have to buy him out, more than likely. All right? It'll only be for another year after that. Well, two years, because the buyout will be a double year. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Now, who else can we trade? McAvoy, we got signed. Krug, Coyle. He, we decided to hold on to him for a, a playoff push. Didn't end up working out, so he might go to free agency now. Brendan Carlo, Heinen, uh, John Moore. I think John Moore we want to part ways with. Martinez we can bring back because he's only at $2 million at 83 overall for another year after this. So that works out for us. Uh, Corrali, yeah, we got to figure out exactly who we want to trade and who we can bring back. So when it comes to the trade block, it's just David Backus. Um, I want everything, all right? I'll take anything for David Backus. Yeah, there you go. Forward, any age. I don't care. Just give me him. Um, same thing with defenseman, any age. I just want the, uh, the AI to have... Um, full flexibility when offering a trade here for uh, David Backus. All right, I will take any of that, and also I will give up. Boom, my uh, my first and my seconds. All right, just to make the trade go through. Like if they want to give up a first for Backus and a second and a third, I will do it. Uh, or sorry, um, Backus and a second for their third, I would do it just to get Backus off the team. All right, so that's that taken care of. Surplus. Uh, we already have all the draft picks on there, all right? So that is the, there is the trading block. That looks good right there. Now what we have to decide is who we want to trade right now, right here. And uh, if there's anyone we can bring back, I think I just want to get draft picks though, to be honest. Um, and then just use that cap space in free agency because we're right there at the brink. So let me just go to view contracts right now. Let me get a, genu a, a general sense of of uh, who's who's staying and who's going, and then we can make our decision. So, yeah, Tuka Rask coming back. Yaroslav Halak has one more year, but that's this year, right? Yeah, I'm still getting used to... Uh, it, it's, di different, it's different between sports games. That year is already done and over with. So, Halak is gone. We can bring him back if we can afford him. So, goalies, we are fine. Uh, defenseman, McAvoy is back. Uh, Tori Krug, we're going to have to give a contract to, and he doesn't want an extension, so that's going to be a rough one. Probably should have tried to offer Tory Krug an extension throughout the uh, the year. Uh, we can bring back Alec Martinez. He, he'll be a good one to have for another cup run with Tuka Rask, Patrice Bergeron, all those guys. But then Carlo and Moore, 2.7 and 2.8 million. I got to make the trades go through right now, right? So Grizzly can stay at 1.4. I think I got to get rid of one of these guys. So Carlo is the right-handed guy, correct? Right-handed. Martinez is left-handed. Uh, Krug is left hand. Is McAvoy right? I think McAvoy's right. Yeah. So you got your two righties and two lefties. So Moore. Moore's got to be the one to go. We got to get rid of this guy's contract at 29 years of age, 2.750 for another one, two, three years. Yeah. Let's just get him off the team right now. Don't know how much uh, trade value is going to have, but I'm going to be trading away John Moore. Uh, don't need to bring in any defensemen. We already have our top four. I'll round out the top six, especially once we find our new coach. I want to be giving the ice time to the top four and the top six. And forwards, let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, and then Jacob Forsback, a Carlson on the second line. Uh, Broussard is going to free agency. Coyle is going to free agency. So we only have six still. Seven for Heinen. Eight, nine, 10, got to get him off the team. We got these two guys back for next year. Richie, yes. The only one I'm thinking about getting rid of is Dayton Heinen. Now, let me take a look at his stats. 11 goals, 24 assists. He was a plus four for us on the year. The only reason I'm thinking about getting rid of him is just that two-point something. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's good. Yeah, he's a good player. He's a good player to have. 
He's a good player. 2.8 million is not that bad for a guy like this. So we're going to hold on to Dayton Heinen. So the only guy we are going to be trading away is going to be the defenseman, Moore. Let me just go through all these salaries again. Bacchus has got to go. we got to try to get Bacchus off the team. And then we're holding on to Heinen, and then Moore is going to go. Everyone after that, Martinez is staying. Grizzlick is staying. Uh, we could always trade Grizzlick in the... Uh, the offseason if I need to, or a free agency if I need to, if there's another defenseman in there. Corrali, I'm keeping. Brett Ritchie, he's going to go to RFA. Yeah, we're good. All right, so let us get to the NHL entry draft, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see what we can do with uh, Moore, see which kind of team uh, wants him. But uh, here it is, the NHL entry draft. we got to make sure that we get a good pick here with our first overall, or our first rounder. So the Nashville Predators. Oh, look at this. The Tampa Bay Lightning want to trade their first overall. Makes sense, right? The Vancouver's first overall. i got to figure out why that was Vancouver. Hang on a second. Is the time going? Time is going. Shit, the time is going. Nashville. Nashville's on the clock. So hang on a second. Vancouver. Who did you get for that? Hughes, Besser, Bo Horvat, Tyler Myers. Uh, was it JT Miller? Was it JT Miller that they signed? Oh, that was a legit trade then. Yeah, because that was uh, that 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 trade happened in real life, did it not? Vancouver, yeah, they traded him in the Aussie. They traded him for a first. Oh my God! And the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Vancouver Canucks end up missing the playoffs, and Tampa Bay ends up getting it. Good God! All right, well, uh, hang on a second. Tampa Bay, if you want to give up that second, what would you want to give it up for? I mean, I got John Moore my first. <laughs> There's no way that'll work. All right, so they want, yeah, I'd have to give up my 15th, obviously, which they don't want. What about uh, players that you would want to get your hands on? Goaltenders? No. And skaters matching the block? Yeah, they want they want prospects. All I got is Vakanen and, like, Bjork. I could send them that way, but that's not even enough. No, nah, there's no way. No. I can't be moving up in the draft here, boys. It's just not going to work out. The Tampa Bay Lightning are going to have to hold on to that pick. So we have, uh, what's his name, on the... We have, uh, what's his name? Oh, shit. Uh, David Backus on the trading block. We just got to wait for it now. So let us simulate. All right, sim to pick. Pick number 15. Yeah, let's go and let's see what happens here. Oh, Foudy and uh, Drysdale both got taken. No. All right, so let's go all the way here. Alexis Lafreniere goes to the Nashville Predators. That's exactly what Nashville needed, man. They got their legitimate uh, uh, forward stud, me, um, high elite, not even uh, medium elite, high elite playmaker, 80 overall. Beta goes to Tampa, so they get uh, an 80 overall right-handed defenseman that for three years will be on a minor league contract. Uh, they, they just got better. Uh, Lucas Raymond went to the Philadelphia Flyers. Right wing sniper, medium elite, 77 overall. Holtz goes to the Islanders. Right wing two-way forward, medium elite. Uh, Quinn Byfield goes to Columbus. That's not bad. Quinn Byfield and Pierre-Luc Dubois down the middle now. Uh, Cole Perfetti goes to the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Lundell goes to the Ottawa Senators. Marco Rossi goes to the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Zeri goes to the Buffalo Sabres. Stranges goes to the Ottawa Senators. So Ottawa gets Lundell and Stranges, a left wing and a center. Uh, Tuminen, a left wing sniper. To the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. And then Baron. They took our... Uh, yeah, they took... There he is, boys. So, Oh, no, no, no. We didn't uh, interview Baron. No, it was Drysdale. So, Foudy. Yeah, there he is. Foudy goes to the Arizona Coyotes. He was a 67 overall medium top six playmaker. So, it would have been somebody good to get, their, uh, get your hands on. Same thing with Drysdale. 66 overall offensive defenseman medium top four. So, essentially the same kind of player. And here we go. We have our picks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call timeout. All right, I'm going to call, yeah, that's enough. And now I'm going to call two timeouts just to be certain. There you go. All right, and now let us uh, find a trade. Oh, you can find a trade from this screen? Right, I keep forgetting about that. That's really cool. That's a good little feature to have in this. So we have them on the trading block, yes, but let's see if we can find a trade here for David Backus. Please let somebody want him. All right, so find a trade. Uh, no trades open. Find trade on the open block. No trades found. So, yeah, we're going to have to buy out David Backus. There's nobody who wants him. All right, so that sucks for us. Uh, let us go to our defenseman this time. We'll bring up uh, John Moore. All right, click on him, and we will find on an open block. Let's see what we can bring back. All right, so Anaheim wants to give us two-thirds, one for this year, one for next year, and this guy, Benoit, uh, low seventh defenseman. Uh, how many trades we got? 
How many trades does it say? One out of 27. So I got 10 minutes. I'm good. Uh, third and a fourth in Mayo. Starter, goaltender, low, third and a fourth. So it seems like we're getting uh, third rounders in here. There's a second from Dallas. It's not bad. And Anton Godobin, one year left, but we have Yaroslav Lock there. Third, third, he big. Uh, Rabinski, let me just try to find somebody who could help us out. Lewis, no, I don't want to take on any salary cap right now. If it's a young guy, uh, then I can do it. Uh, Brook, low top four, no. Uh, Grice, no. Third and fourth. Hadrick, no. No. Thomas Vanek, no. Bobby Riot, oh my god. Take on that $7.3 million contract. No, thank you. We would screw ourselves. Uh, no. Uh, no. Third and fourth. And I don't know who that guy is, but he's got three years left on a minor league deal. So the San Jose Sharks look like a pretty good one right now. I'm going to have to check out that guy. What was it? Low top nine, yeah. Uh, third and fourth, and a goaltender, no. Timishov, low top six for one more year, no. Uh, Reed Boucher in third and fourth, no. Sven Barchisi, no. That's a little bit too much money. I think the two-thirds, two-thirds ain't bad, but to get a player back as well, the San Jose Sharks, let me see that pick. Edit trade. Yeah, let me see this Chekovic guy. So John Moore going to the Western Conference. We're going to get a third over, or third rounder, which will be the 74th overall pick. Might get something lucky. And a fourth rounder for next season. But this guy, Chekovic, a center. Let's see, seven goals, three assists. Now here's another guy with more goals than assists. Now, 68 games played, but only 13 minutes time on ice. So he's not getting, you know, top six time. Seven goals. Hang on a second. Let me see how many shots this guy's taken. Uh, one, uh, 128 in 68 games played and only 13 minutes time on ice. This guy might be a shooter. This guy might be something similar to Jacob Forsbacka Carlson. Let's see. His takeaway, more takeaways than giveaways. Doesn't throw the body too much. But, yeah, this guy might not be bad. I'm going to give this guy a chance. All right, Chekovic. Yeah, I like that. All right, so Chekovic, he's also a minor league deal for three years. So if he turns into something for us, um, it'll be nice and cheap. And we get two uh, draft picks back. And we're dumping this 2.750. All right, so proposed trade. Trade accepted. There you go. And also, for our GM mode commentaries, the trade finder is actually, like, it's better, it's better for us because now no one's going to be accusing me of fleecing the computers, you know, cheesing the system. I mean, I went to Trade Finder. The San Jose Sharks wanted that trade. I went through with it, all right? That's it. They missed the playoffs. They didn't give up too much of the roster for next season. They get a, a, a left-handed defensive defenseman, and we get ourselves two draft picks and a minor league player and free up some cap space, all right? So I like that trade. We still have seven minutes left on the clock, so we are good. I know I've been doing this a lot, but let me just go through it again just to make sure that there's no bad contracts lingering on our team. And McAvoy, Charlie Coyle. Um, we're holding on to Carlo. We're holding on to Dayton Hine in for, uh, for next season. We're holding on to Alec Martinez. Uh, I think, uh, was Krug, is Krug going to be an RFA at least? Is he going to be an RFA next season or, or what? I can't even tell right here. I want to know if he's going to be an RFA next season. Because if not, then, uh, shit, I might not be able to tender a qualifying offer if he wants that much. Uh, no, I got to hold on to Carlo and Hyden. I got to. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Sean Corrali is one that I could, but 1.275 million, that is absolutely nothing for a depth player. So we're going to hold on to him. Now we're good. All right, so let us just get to our draft pick. The 15th overall pick in the uh, 2020 draft. The Boston Bruins are on the clock. Now, we've only done one other interview. It was this guy, Antti Pitkinen. It actually kind of makes sense on this team. Um, a right winger to play alongside of that DeBrusque, Krejci. And if uh, we don't go with uh, Forsback or Carlson, you know, this guy might one day end up playing on that second line. Maybe a third line. Maybe even a first line. I don't know what that potential is like. Remember, it's only two bar. Uh, but I do like his, uh, I do like his production in an A plus league, only 13 minutes time on ice. And yet he's got six goals, nine assists and 45 games played playing with men, playing with guys who are in the mid seventies. All right. So I'm going to go with anti Pitkinen, baby. We've gotten lucky with, uh, with European players before Pasternak. All right. Now we're going with anti Pitkinen. Welcome to the Boston Bruins. Let's see what he's about. All right. Power forward, 66 overall.
overall medium top six. So we got the same essentially as a Foudy or a Drysdale. We got the guy mid 60s at a, at a one step below elite. All right, either a top six forward or a top four defenseman. So I like that pick. That's a good pick for us. Simulate options. Let's sim to our next pick. Now, is anyone? No, no one came to us. I was hoping that somebody might come to us with a uh, suggestion or an offer for, uh, for uh, what's his name, Bacchus, but no. So do we miss anything real good after this? Top six, top four, top four, top six. I'm just looking. Yeah, there we go. Meet our high top nines. Top six, top four, top four. Yeah, there were plenty of options for us. Just looking to see if there was any like guys in like the mid 70s or something. No, it doesn't look like it. You might see that more as you get to uh, the draft picks without um, or with created players. So up next, we just have to take some guesses here on our drafts. This uh, this represents the actual NHL a lot better. Um, if not, we would just have uh, the best players every single time. So we don't want to do that. So let me just go through some of these guys and their individual stats and see if we can find anyone that pops out at us. See, all these other guys who were playing in A-plus leagues and got literally no points in seven games played. Yeah, that's the difference between them and Pitkin and the guy that we drafted. So we got a right winger, uh, an 18-year-old right-handed defenseman, 44 penalty minutes, only 19 points in 60 games played in a C-minus league, not the greatest. Koivu. Uh, 28 games played, one goal, only played 11 minutes, but another, another Rimo Koivu, another, uh, fantastic Finn right winger, uh, Pierre Olivier Roy, uh, more than likely a playmaker, but like maybe high 50 playmaker, top nine, you know, that's the vibe I'm getting out of this guy, uh, and Morozov, I really can't tell anything about that guy, you, you're taking a, you're taking a guess there. So, um, let's just continue to add to our forward core then. We got the, uh, the, the right winger. Let's get a left winger now in Pierre Olivier Roy. He looks like a playmaker on that side. We got the power forward on the right. Let's get the playmaker on the left side, all right? So, Roy, I think he's a playmaker. I think he is. Uh, let's see. Roy, playmaker, but a medium bottom six. So, yeah, you're starting to fall into the lower potential categories right now, but that's okay. Uh, Sim to pick. So, here's our second... Yeah, here comes our second, uh, third rounder. Do we miss out on anything? Yeah, this guy Morozov would have been better, and Koivu would have been better. Medium top nine, so I was wrong on that pick. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Maybe just go with the defenseman. Kuta, a fantastic Finn defenseman. I was wrong on the other Finn. This guy, 19 games, no points, but as a defenseman, and he was a plus two in 19 games played, only playing 13 minutes. Also, didn't take many penalties. Kimo Kuta. We go a fantastic Finn draft here, boys. I'm doing it. Kimo Kuta. Let's see what he's like. Come on, Kuta. Come on, Kuta. Medium top six. All right. So that's the same as these guys. A top six defenseman. 62 overall. Might might make the NHL team at one point. So two fantastic Finns coming to Boston. Next round. Round number five. All right. So we're really just taking shots in the dark now. I'm just going to basically go off of... Uh, yeah, I'm going to try this goaltender. You never know. We need a, we need a prospect goalie. 8-8-7, eight, eight, uh, what's it called, save percentage. Only five games played, though, in an A-plus league. And goalies are hit or miss. You might get somebody with a good potential. High fringe starter. You know what? For a fifth-round pick, a high fringe starter ain't too shabby. That'll have decent trade value. And if he grows a high fringe starter, he can make it to the 80s. So you're looking at a backup right there, possibly. All right? You're looking at a legitimate backup for the Boston Bruins. And he's only 17 years of age. If this guy has the right growth, I've seen fringe starters get to, like, mid-80s. So, yeah, that's actually not a horrible pick. All right? So sim options. Uh, sim to pick 170. We're in round number six right now. So we got the, got the goalie. We got the forwards. Oh, even my scout's saying to go after this guy, Mosier. Yanis Jerome Moser. Mosier. He's played in a B-minus league, plus seven in 12 games played as a defenseman. Eight, Only eight penalty minutes. All right, I'll listen to you. How old is he? 20. He's already 20. This could be a mistake. I'm going to listen to the scout, but this could be a mistake. Medium top six. All right, it's not a mistake. Good job. Woo! See what I mean, though? This guy, Jansen, center playmaker, low elite. We would have been able to find that guy in, like, the second or third round. Instead, he drops to the fifth, and, it, and it's a gem found by the Ottawa Senators. All right, that's better, I find. I don't like the, uh, the scouting setup in this game. So, Sim to pick 201 now, ladies and gents. We're way up there. We're just taking shots in the dark. Uh, I mean, you can look at some of the stats now if you want. Is there any way I can change the player from here? No. So, hang on a second. So, like, six and eight. 
five and eight, uh, six and twelve, uh, one and three, uh, five and two. See, the five and two is an interesting one because Luke Evangelista might be more of a shooter. So you know what? I'm gonna try this Luke Evangelista guy. There you go. Let's see what he ends up being. Uh, two way forward, 52 overall, medium bottom six. Probably nothing for us, but he actually might simulate well. So you never know. Simulate entire draft. There you go. So that would be it. There is the NHL entry draft complete. And your Boston Bruins have six new players. Pitkinen, Roy, Kuta, Radulov, Mosier, and Evangelista. <laughs> A lot of European players coming in uh, to Boston, baby. All right, so that's good. Let's get to the re-sign stage. And I also got to figure out when the, the coaching, when you hire coaches in this. Is it... It might be the start of, uh, what's it called, of the re-sign stage as well. The re-sign phase starts today, and you must also tender contracts to some skaters and goalies, blah, 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 blah. Now, they didn't say anything about coaches. Maybe it's free agency when you uh, have to sign your coaches for the first time. Can I do it now? Uh, coaching staff. Can I hire? No, I can't hire a coach right now. Coaching staff. I go to coaching staff. I go to hire. No, there's no way. No, you can't hire a coach just yet. You have to go to free agency to get that ability. All right. So we have the contracts now. Here's where it gets very interesting because we weren't able to get the big man's contract off the team. Where is he? David Backus, six million dollars. So if I decide to buy him out, it's going to cost us two million dollars for the next two years. So instead of six million dollars for this year, it'll be two million dollars this year and two million dollars next year. So it helps us this year by four million, but it hurts us next year by two million. So, if I can get it done without buying out David Backus, I would like to do it. So, we're going to do that last. But where's our cap space? $24 million of cap space? I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. So, let's go through this one step at a time here. Um, I, I will do some power of video editing in this part, but I just want to show you guys what the plan is first. So, we got Tuka Rask, Yaroslav Halak, uh, Legacy. I'm going to be dropping these goalies. I don't need these goalies right here. Uh, Vladar, high backup. I will sign you. A high backup might become something. So, one year, two way. So that works for me. Uh, Kaiser, all right. And this guy, Radulov. That we just signed, high fringe starter. I'm going to leave him unsigned for a couple years so we can play in Europe still. All right. Uh, hang on one second, boys. I got to blow my nose. Okay, that's a little bit better. So, goalies taken care of. Defenseman up next. So we got McAvoy signed for one, two, two more years before he's an RFA. Tory Krug is a UFA, and he doesn't want an extension. How much does he want? Oh, my God. He wants nine mil. All right, so that's going to be a rough one. It's the new NHL. Salary caps have gone up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to have to work on that. But uh, it may even be beneficial to let Tory Crew go to um, go to free agency and then to try to sign him there because by not wanting an extension with the Boston Bruins, this guy's going to want a lot of money. Like, to get him signed, I probably have to give him, like, six years, $10 million. All right, so I'll have to wait on that one. Martinez, Carlo Vac uh, Vacaninen. Uh, I'm going to wait on Grizzly, Joe, I'm going to wait on, I got to wait on you guys. I can't offer you any contracts just yet. Sherman, I'm going to release you. Let me just clean up this roster a little bit. Uh, Clifton, three years at $1 million. I don't even know who this Clifton guy is. I'd like to get his $1 million off the books. That doesn't even look like it's a minor league deal. Uh, Kuta, uh, do we want to be signing these guys to be playing in Finland? I don't know. Yeah. All right. So you know what? Yeah, this is probably pretty boring for you guys. Let me go through and just edit and uh, edit all the um, the players that we don't want on our roster, and then we can start offering some contracts. So hang on one second. Okay. So I have gone through the team. I've gotten everyone off that we uh, we don't want to bring back. I don't know if this is going to be a tough. This is going to be a tough one to get under the cap, boys. This is why. I think even losing Chara was a good thing for this team because $24 million a cap, and look who we got to get signed. We got to get Krug signed. Um, if we want to bring back Broussard, Charlie Coyle, got to get those two guys signed. But then our RFAs, uh, Richie, uh, Lozon, Grizzlick, Gagans, Borsback, Carlson, Bjork, Cleric, uh, Fitzgerald, Shinishin, DeBrusque. <laughs> There's a lot of contracts we got to hand out. So we might as well start off with the guys that we want back. Tori Krug. All right, so I'm going to try to offer him. The max I'm prepared to offer him is, if I lower the, no, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So five years, uh, what did he want again? Six years? Offering it. Six years, that'll take him up to 35 years of age. Yeah, that's about right for a guy like Tori Krug. 
Um, I'd even go five years, Tori. Four years to make it a little bit. No, five years, yeah, to 34. So we'll go five years. He doesn't want to come back, so let me try nine and a half first. All right, and uh, then I'll try 10. If he doesn't want 10 over five years, if he doesn't want $50 million, we're going to let him go to free agency first, and then we'll try to offer him another contract. All right, so Tory Krug, five times 9.5. There you go. Broussard, we're holding off on. Charlie Coyle, we're holding off on. Richie Lozen, we know we want back Jake DeBrusque. All right, so Jake DeBrusque, he's got to get a contract. He's a second liner for us. 20 goals, 33 assists, plus four. Ever since uh, Jacob Forsback Carlson played on his line, he was playing great. So we want to try to get this guy signed long term, but also as cheap as possible. I think it would be beneficial to go short term here with a guy like DeBrusque. So he's 23. I don't know how many more years left of RFA I can buy. Uh, 5.4. No, let's get him nice and cheap. Let's go two years. Yeah, let's go two years till he's 25 years of age, and then we can sign him long term after that. So two years, let's try to get him at 4.5. As much money as we can save right now, because the time to win is right now. We have to try to save some money. So, oh, expiry status, RFA. Oh, there it says it does stay at the bottom. All right, thank you, EA. So if I offer him a four-year deal, he's still he's a UFA. If I offer him a three-year deal, he's an RFA. So two-year deal for sure. So then it'll definitely be an RFA, and I can go long term after that. Yeah. So four and a half over two years for Jake DeBrusque. There you go. Uh, Shinishin, I'm gonna wait on you, waiting on you guys. Jacob Fors back a Carlson. I want back. Absolutely want back. Uh, how many more years of RFA can I buy? Ooh, yeah. This is nice, cheap. This is nice and cheap. So let's just buy two years of RFA. So he'll be an RFA after that. Uh, yeah. You can have a one-year deal or a, a one-way deal. At a million dollars for two years. There you go, Jacob Forsback Carlson. Boom. And then this guy, Gauntz, who we traded for. Let me see what kind of stats he put up in the NHL. He was a minus four, but 15 to 17 takeaways. Yeah, he's good. He's good. He's a good fourth liner for us. He's not the reason we lost the season. So a uh, one year, I'll give you two years. Actually, you know what? He wants a little bit more than JFK. I'll hold I'll hold on on I'll hold off on him. All right, so all those guys taken care of. Yeah, let's advance the day. And yes, they give me the option to advance the day from this screen. Thank you, EA. I've decided to reject a contract renewal. I've decided to test the free agent market. Some more money could change my mind. All right, so we are in trouble of losing Tory Krug. Um, Jake DeBrusque is back, though. Uh, Vla Damn, Vladar, what the hell? Did I offer him? Oh, the goalie. Right, right, right. That backup goalie. Fours back. Carlson is back as well. Beautiful. All right, so we have $20 million of cap space now. we got to get Tory Krug signed. So five years. I'm going to go five years at 10 mil. If he doesn't accept this, we're going to let him go to free agency and try to get him there. All right, because it's going to cost us It's going to cost us so much to go this high for a guy 88 overall. He's 29. He's in his prime, but still, man, this is a lot of money. So five years at $10 million there for Tory Krug. We're going to see if uh, he accepts it. So there's no one else I want to get signed just yet. We still have uh, plenty of days left. So, yeah, let's just advance the day again. Let's see if Tory Krug decides to sign. I've decided to reject a contract renewal. All right. So, Tory Krug is going to go to free agency, ladies and gents. Um, if he wants $10 million in free agency, fine. But I don't like the idea of having this guy sign for like $10.5, $11 million when we only have $20 million of cap space available. All right, and also in like two years, all these other guys need big-time contracts as well. And uh, who's our big-time guy? Like Brad Marchand with the big-time contract? Hang on a second. Let me see this. Pasternak, I mean, look, this is not what we do here in Boston. Pasternak, six and a half. Uh, Bergeron, 6.8. Marchand, 6.1. We can't give Tory Krug 10, 11 million dollars. That won't work. So, yeah, I'm going to back out on that one for Tory Krug. So, goaltenders, uh, I'm going to let Yaroslav Halak go to free agency because now with Tory Crew, we don't know how much we can sign. So, we're going to let that guy go. Uh, defenseman, yeah, Tory Krug, I'm going to let him go to free agency, ladies and gents. That one hurts. That one hurts. Uh, Grizzlick and uh, Joe Lu uh, Lausen, Luzon, I'm going to qualify RFAs, all right, because now we got to save as much money as possible before going into free agency to get Corey, Tory Krug back. So I don't know if I want to bring these guys back on the team just yet. So we're going to qualify RFAs for those two. Um, Kuta and Moser, yeah, we're going to give these guys contracts so that they can play in the AHL squad and begin to grow. So there's Kuta and there is Moser, both given contracts. 
Uh, right wingers. All right, so Richie, I don't know if I want him back as well, so I'm going to qualify RFA. Shenishin, don't know if I want him back, so I'm going to qualify RFA. You guys let me know if these guys are worthwhile bringing back. Shenishin, I might be able to give. Oh, you know what? Shenishin, I'm going to get back on a two-way deal. There you go. Two-way, two years, boom. All right, that'll work out for us. Uh, left wingers, Bjork. I don't know if I want to get this guy signed as well. See, the thing is, 1.2 million. RFA. RFA right now, boys. Uh, Gaunt's the same thing. RFA. We got to save as much money before we get to free agency so we can make that decision. Uh, Cleric, top nine. Uh, you got some points down there in the AHL. We're going to have to qualify RFA there also. Uh, Roy... Centers, Bergeron, Krejci, Broussard. Now we're not going to be signing Broussard and Charlie Coyle. Let me see what kind of numbers Charlie Coyle put up. A minus eleven. What kind of what kind of money does he want? I don't think two point three. Now if he's available in free agency, then we'll sign him in free agency. The way this team is set, we have to we have to save our money and and pick the right player here to sign. Oh, uh, that becomes available. So this guy Fitzgerald, I can get him on a two way deal. All right, so I will. All right, and I think that's everything. So all skaters, we just sort by our uh, our salary. Yeah, so Evangelista, I didn't sign. Roy, no uh, contract. Pickinen, I want to give a contract to, so let's get Pickinen signed. All right, he can play in the AHL. And uh, this guy, Mankiewi, no, I'm not signing him. All the other RFAs have been tendered qualifying offers, and Fitzgerald has been giving a two-way deal. So that should be everyone now, ladies and gents. Shenishin has decided to sign. Fitzgerald is back. Uh, Moser has decided to sign a entry-level deal. Same thing with Pitkinen. Good. Kuta, it's an honor to join your team. All right, so everyone is here, and we have $20 million of cap space available. So I've really uh, allowed some flexibility. And now what we have to also do is we have to do it. I just have to do it. Before we get to free agency, I have to part ways with David Backus. I was hoping that maybe I could get uh, Tory Krug and all those other guys signed and uh, save that money, but saving $4 million this year, is uh is it's too valuable i know we're going to be hamstrung with two million dollars next season but uh that is something i can live with we got to get Krejci signed but maybe we can save some money on the Krejci deal but we'll still have bergeron signed and pasternak and marchand so it won't hurt us um and by the time next year pops up with mcavoy and debrusque it'll be off so i think we can get away with david back as being bought out so I'm going to buy out David back as ladies and gentlemen. There you go. And we have $23.5 million of cap space. To show you guys our team, we have a goalie. We need a backup. Defenseman, we have three defensemen now. That is it. Carlo Martinez and McAvoy. And forwards, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. We can fill out our forward core with our RFAs, but there is room for a big-time player to come back, all right? So there you go. There it is. There's the re-sign stage. Took a little longer than I wanted to, but uh, there was a lot of decisions to be made. Now, we also may be able to get some of those players that we gave qualifying offers to. They might just sign two-way deals. Might sign cheap deals to come back on the Boston Bruin team, which would be beneficial to us. But here we go. Advanced day, two free agency. Boom. All right, so we are there. Contract limit warning. At least uh, all teams must be 50 con. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I'll, I'll get that. Don't worry. And can we hire coaches now as well? Uh, hire staff. There you go. So we can get our uh, our coaches hired now. So you guys can help me out with this. Uh, Bergevin. <laughs> Philippe Bergevin. There you go. Uh, so overall, yeah, the best coach right there, Philippe Bergeron. Uh, team chemistry forwards. Let's see what he does. Uh, Pastor Nax. So I would show you the roster fit for those players. All right. Roll three lines. Philippe Bergeron wants to uh, roll three lines and the defensive all pairings. So that actually might be good. Coaching style offensive, baby. Let's go. Brendan Moore. Uh, Derek Brendan Moore. What's he doing? Rolling four lines. No, we don't need any of that. Gaspard Podvin. No, you're garbage. Veterans. Oh, what's this? Uh, <laughs> forward ice time allocation, normal? I don't know what normal means. Maybe it's just like uh, the top two lines get like top six ice time, the bottom six get bottom six. Like two lines essentially and two shit lines. All right, so I'm, I'm liking that Bergevin guy. Why not, right? If there's the best coach available, why not sign him? We got the money. Staffing salary, yeah, we have like $6 million. I might not even be able to afford that guy, to be honest. Let's see. How much I got? Coach budget remaining, 1.7 of what? 
Oh, I got 6.1. I only have 6.1. I can't even afford this guy. We're going to have to freaking fire everyone else. So you guys let me know with the coaching. I'll do some more uh, uh, scouting for which coach I want. But what I want to end this video on is a free agency, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So your number one free agency. Boom. Braden Point. Braden Point. That would be a nice one for us. RFA. But if we wanted to give this guy an RFA deal, because Tampa Bay more than likely cannot match that offer. All right. They cannot match that offer. If I go six years, 9.3. All right. It would the next four years of first round picks. Oh, my God. That's a lot. That is a lot. But they also have Taylor Hall available. All right. Roman Yossi is available. Tori Krug. There he is. And how much does he want? He only wants 8.3 now. You see what I mean? So I was willing to give him 10. I could go up to like nine million now over the next like six years or five years and still get what he was what he wanted in uh the re-signing stage all right joe thornton is there joe thornton 7.7 7 million tyson berry hoffman falk Granlin, Kreider, muzzin all right so there are yeah there are a lot of players that we could bring in to help fill out this squad it's almost like it's a good situation to be in um the two million dollars of uh of what's his name oh my god the guy that we just bought out Oh my God, how can I not? David Backus, jeez. Ah, man, I'm, I must be tired or something. David Backus is off the team, so that's good. Justin Falk, I thought he signed a long-term deal with uh, with St. Louis. Did I not give him the contract extension with St. Louis? Maybe maybe it just happened. Maybe it happened before or after the uh, roster update. So you guys let me know what we could do here in Boston with the new coaches and what we have on the blue line. I think we can get Tory Krug back, and then if we want to go after Braden Point, but then there's $20 million right there. But two stud players that we could bring in. Taylor Hall and Krug. Uh, Roman Yossi and Tory Krug. You know, just build up the blue line without... Uh, Without uh, Zidane Ochara. Bring back Joe Thornton to Boston, baby, for one more year. Tyson Berry, right-handed defenseman, 7.7 .7 million. Uh, Hoffman, another sniper on that team. I think Hoffman is a really good sniper. I think, yeah, 23 goals. He'll definitely get you some points. And that'll allow DeBrusque uh, some time to either move down to the third line or Hoffman could be moved down to the third line even. So there's a lot of different things that we can do here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And I will see you guys in the next one when we take it to year number two. Hey guys, Johnny here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Nandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to shit all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card. First inning.